What's the number one thing you think you take pride in with your job? There's so many aspects of your job. It's it's pleasing people. It's it's making kids from you know B to A, and then you say that's their NHL. It seems like there's so many elements, there's so many pathways you can go with your job. What's one thing that you can? I know it's a tough question because it's, there's it's, you can't just nail one thing, but what's one aspect you really take pride in my thing is consistency you know like sunday saturday i like to book these podcasts five days a week and just take pride in that schedule i go on my google calendar and i'm like all right let's fill this fucking calendar up and let's get to work what's that one thing you take pride in consistency is it yeah yeah um going to all games yeah try to get to as many games you know just go see triple a yeah, I like it, that. I like that answer. You know, you know, yeah. But at the same time, you know, I, I work with coaches and we introduced a product I, and I got to give a shout out to Sean McKenzie in Bedford because he is probably uh, the mentor to a lot of people in hockey. Uh, he's been a great mentor for me. Um, Love to have him on here. Oh, uh, he, yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. You talk about tiny stories you can't tell. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, it's, um, uh, you know, Sean introduced a thing out in Bedford called uh, core skills. So what would he identify with, with the coaches? The average coach can't teach skill. Okay, so you have stations, and this is Pee Wee Hockey. I mean, it's like back to novice and IP. So uh, you know, we we do a thing called. So I, I adopted that in Dartmouth, and I think it was a it was a home run. So every Saturday, Sunday, I'm going through videos, and so instead of getting a piece of paper, you're a, you're a, you have a station. I'm sending you a video of your station. Yeah. So you can see it at different angles and how you're doing it. So. I'm going to need a bumper. I'm going to need two cones. I'm going to need this, you know, to set up my station. I have all the stuff ready for them. So that's part of it. But I think it's connecting with a whole bunch of people is, is where it's at. And so what I have to do this with the coaches, I'm doing this with the top end Adam coaches. I'm doing this with Adam recreational coaches. They're doing the same drills. They're doing the same stuff. And people say, well, I said, no, why, why wouldn't you do the same stuff? Why wouldn't you? Like, you know, it doesn't, we can't differentiate players yeah. and that's how you grow your sport. But, uh, you know, getting, you know, getting to know, have more relationships. You mentioned, you know, about my relationship that I, that I have with a lot of people. Now I'm building more relationships and there's a trust factor. Yeah. So there, I'm not, you know, I think some point, some people think I'm out there to, to coach their team and I don't want to coach their team. Yeah. I've coached a lot of teams. Yeah. I've been on a lot of benches, yeah. but I don't think that that's the way to go. And, and I, after a game, I'll say to them, Hey, how was your game? And usually on a, on a Tuesday morning or a Wednesday morning, I'm sitting in my office and my phone rings. what you see last night? The coaches, you know, I, or I got an issue I got to deal with. So once you build those relationships and the trust factor, it's great. It and, must be uh, a rewarding feeling yeah. knowing that coaches are calling you saying, yes. what did you see last night? Two things. Yeah. One, it means they care. Yeah. Two, it means they respect your input. That's a great yeah. feeling. Yeah. And, and what, I, what I've learned too is to listen. I've learned to listen to the people and a lot of times answer the question themselves. They need the bounce. They need the bouncing board. You know, if you're a coach and went home and like I coach midget, I was famous for going home saying to my wife, I knew we won. Can you tell me the score? Or <laughs> I knew we lost, but I, I always knew the last score. Um, you know, so sometimes having that person to talk to, you know, when you go home and you know, you got your family sitting there and you look at your wife and say, ah, oh, geez, you know, our four checks stunk tonight. And she's like, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. know, I, I had two, I had, a, I had a daughter I was taking care of, you know, and this and that, and you know, because my wife's a saint. Uh, uh, when I started coaching midget in 1995, she was pregnant with our daughter, and uh, I was playing in a tournament, out, and it was called a Maki tournament. Used Maki, a, Maki. So it was okay. all the coaches. Okay, it was out in Lower Sackville, and um, it was in May. And I was playing with a real good friend of mine, Tom McKetton, who passed away three years ago. And he and I coached Bantam the year before, Bantam AAA in Dartmouth. And after a game, he sits down beside me and we're having maybe a beer. And he goes, uh, ah, we got a chance to coach Midget next year. I got to know tomorrow. I get out of the car. I, I get out of the rink. I go to the car. And those days, the voicemail, no texting. Yeah. And I check the voicemail at home. And my wife was working at the Grace at the time in labor and delivery. And I get this message at home saying, you can come in any time now. <laughs> so I call the hospital at the, the duty desk. I said, hey, what's going on? Oh, uh, just come on in. So she was so dehydrated during her pregnancy with her oh. daughter that she had to get IV treatment. So I walk in the door and she loves telling the story because... Sometimes when you have a beer or two and you've just finished playing the sweat, you know, I know, I you know. might smell a bit more. So <laughs> uh, I come in, I look at her and she goes, you stink like this. And I go, mm hmm. Okay. I said, I got something I got to ask you. <laughs> and so I said, and I got to know. And she just looked at me like lying in a hospital bed and said, well, you know, you want to coach, you coach. 
So our daughter was born October 18th. Ten days later, she's at her first hockey game. Oh, so man. and every night I'd be in Clover Place looking across, and yeah. she'd be coming in the stroller. So And Luke could have been three. Wow. So, you know, and that's the thing about, and I respect a lot of coaches too that coach with their kids involved. Yeah. And because I did that. And I think there's a lot of people, Chris Donnelly's in that boat, a lot of guys, Kevin Mitchell, yeah. all these great hockey minds that we have in the province. And, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, so my, my, my life partner is, uh, is crazier than me, I think, to, to do it because, and, and she got into it. And then as I was coaching midgets, she became my, George Costanza, assistant to the travel secretary. Yeah. She, used, she used to book, she started to travel with the team. And so I'd say team meals and she'd have team meals booked. She'd get all the parents' hotel rooms done and it was great. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a great uh, run. And, uh, and even when I was scouting, you know, she, she might've made a trip or two and gone shopping yeah. when I was scouting. And yeah. So uh, it's tough right now. Like the winters are long, you know, cause I'm in the rink every day.